If you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough. That's a famous quote by Albert Einstein. What I'm going to do is try and harness that and put together a series of mini tutorials to help explain some of the questions that people seem to struggle with in IDC preparation and within the IDC itself. So I'm doing this because I do realize that for some people, it's maybe been a while since you've done your dive master and for others, maybe you've had a period of inactivity, especially in current times. And it's not unreasonable to think that you might have forgot a few things. So I've put these together. We're just going to look at some specific questions and then talk about how to work these questions out. So hopefully you gain more of an understanding. This is not to be used as a definitive IDC study guide by any means, but it can be used in conjunction with some learning that you're already doing with your e-learning and other materials from previous courses that you've done. So with that in mind, let's get started. Physics. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at some of the questions from the physics section. In particular, this one deals with displacement, which is looking at Archimedes' principle. Um, this is a kind of question or a good example of a question where people do sometimes have some difficulties with because it can seem like, you know, there's a big formula involved and there's a lot of calculations. But what we can do is reduce it to a couple of simple things, which will help you be able to work out any question of this ilk. So what we're going to do is look at this question right now, and then we're going to talk about the ways that we can break it down and simply answer this question. So what we have is how much water must be displaced to bring a 500 kilogram object to the surface. The object displaces 300 liters and it lies in 40 meters of seawater. So with questions like this, no matter how they're asked, the way they're worded, there are only three pieces of information that you need to be able to answer any of these questions. Once you have all three things, you can answer the question. Omission of one or more of these things is a simple answer. We cannot answer the question. So that's nice and easy, but we want to assume that we can answer the question. So now let's look at the three things. Magic. So here are the three things that we've just mentioned. This is what we need to know to be able to successfully work these questions out. So we need to know the OWD. I remember that using the acronym of Open Water Diver as a scuba instructor. It's something I'm extremely familiar with saying or writing down. It's a series of letters that just, you know, it has a ring in my head. So I use that. So OWD, but what does it actually mean? What O means is object. Does the question give you the weight of the object? W is water. Does the question tell you the type of water that the object sits in, salt water or fresh water? And D is displacement. Does the question give you the displacement of the object? If all three things are present, then we can successfully work this out. Omission of one or more of these things means we can't work that out. Um, so if we look at the question right now, O object, does it tell us the weight of the object? Yeah, it does. 500 kilograms, so we can put the 500 in there. Water, does it say what kind of water that this object sits in? Yes, it does, 40 meters of seawater. The depth of the object is irrelevant in this case. It's only salt or fresh is what we need to know, and it tells us salt water. D, displacement, does the question give us that? Yes, it says 300 liters, so we can put that in. We now have all three pieces of information and that's all you need to know to be able to answer this question. But what does it mean? Well, ultimately, object is the force acting down. Displacement is a force acting up. And we just need to find the difference between the two. However, what we're often dealing with are two different mediums. In this case, we have kilograms and liters. It's like apples and oranges. We have to convert them so we work in the same medium. So there's a very simple way to do this, and that's what we're going to move on to next. So in the interest of breaking things down and making them as simple as possible, what I like to do now that we have the information is sing a little nursery rhyme. Now, the nursery rhyme is something that, again, is one of those hooks that will help you remember what to do. So I don't have much of a singing voice, so I'm going to leave this to one of my friends. Open your ears and enjoy the music. 
With a knick-knack paddywhack give a dog a bone This old man came rolling home Beautiful. So I don't know if you know that nursery rhyme or that song um, but that's the tune that I want to get into your head. Okay so if we're familiar with that then all we really need to do now is I just want to change the lyrics. Okay and I change the lyrics to this so it's a screenshot moment. Okay if the object lies at the bottom of the sea divide by 1.03 okay so we sing that nursery rhyme to that tune but with these updated lyrics now saying them is one thing hearing them is something else the purpose is to get that tune in your head therefore it's easier to recall and like i've just said my voice is rubbish so let's listen to something a little bit more pleasant when an object lies at the bottom of the sea divide by 1.03 angels okay so if the object lies at the bottom of the sea divide by 1.03 so we already know that we have the data we've been able to recall that from the question and we kind of understand what the information has given us downward force and upward force however the two different mediums so we need to convert one of them what we're going to do by applying this riddle to the question is we're able to convert into liters okay so if the object lies at the bottom of the sea, which it does, then divide it by 1.03. So we do 500 divided by 1.03. And what I'll do, if you look at your calculators right now, is it will tell you that that is approximately 485.4. So what we've done by applying that riddle is we've converted the 500 kilograms into liters so we now have liters and liters we're working in the same medium so all we really need to do now is remove the 300 from the 485 and that's how we find the difference the difference will be 185.4 and that will be liters which is your answer so by understanding we need the owd and then sing in the riddle we can work these questions out no matter how they're worded or what values are put in there. So what I'm going to do right now is we're just going to use the same example question, but I'm going to change some of the values. So just give me a second to get that arranged and then I'll be back with you. And there it is. So like I said just now is you can put any of these values in that you want. So I've made an Alan Shearer inspired question right here. He scored 206 goals for Newcastle. He's born in 1970 and he played at Newcastle for 10 years. Okay, so you can play around with these. It doesn't matter what they are. We work them out the same way. So in this question right here, what we need to know is first, do we have the OWD? So does the question give us the weight of the object? Yes, it does. 206. 206 kilograms acting down. Does it tell us the type of water that it sits in? Yeah, 10 meters of sea water, so sea salt water. So we can put an S, it's the sea. Next, displacement. Do we have the displacement in the question? Yeah, we do, 70 liters. And remember, the 70 liters is acting up. We need to find the difference in between now. So we have all three pieces of data. That means we can answer the question. So what do we do now? We sing the song. So if the object lies at the bottom of the sea, which it does, then divide by 1.03. So 206 divided by 1.03 will give you 200. And what we've now done as before is we've converted kilograms into liters, and we can take the 70 liters from this, which will give us 130 liters. And that is your answer, nice and simple. Just have all three things and then sing the riddle. And that's going to help you determine whether or not you need to divide by 1.03. So what I'm going to do now is give us another minute. I'll rewrite the board and then we'll look at some freshwater examples. Super easy. Okay, there it is. The question's been rewritten. I've just put in the original values from the first question, um, but we've only changed the fact that we're now dealing with fresh water so we can use it as a bit of a comparison. So nothing changes. 
we need to know that we have the three things and then we sing the riddle and that's how we get the answer. So if we look at the question involved here, do we have the weight of the object? Yeah, 500 kilos. So we can put the 500 kilos of downward force. Do we have the water that it sits in? Yes, we do. Meters of fresh water. So we're dealing with fresh water now. And lastly, displacement. Does that give you in the question? Yes, it does. We have the 300 liters of upward force. We now need to find the difference. So we have all three things, so we can work the question out. Next thing to do is sing the little nursery rhyme in your head and then apply it to the data that you have. So if the object lies at the bottom of the sea, it doesn't, okay? So what we do in this instance is we do not divide it by 1.03. Like the riddle says, we only do it if the object lies at the bottom of the sea. So we move on to the next step. And if we remember, the next step is you take the displacement away from the object. So 300 from 500 leaves you with 200, and that is liters of displacement, and that's the answer to the question. We know because of the, the conversion that one liter of fresh water weighs one kilogram, so they cancel each other out. It's by applying the riddle is how we know whether to or whether not to divide by 1.03. Okay, so what I'll do now is give me another minute, I'll rewrite the board and we'll do the Alan Shearer example again. Okay, so there we are, back to Alan Shearer. Okay, so same thing, let's work through this together. Do we have the three things? Object weight, do we have that? Yes, 206 kilograms. So 206 kilograms of downward force. Do we know the water that it sits in? Yes, we do. It's in fresh water, so we can put the fresh there. And do we have the displacement of the object? Yes, we know we're back to 70 liters in this case. So that is 70 liters of upward force. We find the difference. How do we do that? We apply the riddle. If the object lies at the bottom of the sea, it doesn't, so we don't divide by 1.03. So we move on to the next stage, which is to remove the displacement from the object. So 70 from 206 will leave you with 136 liters of displacement required because again, we remember one liter of fresh water weighs one kilogram, so they cancel each other out as a metric, and we're left with 136 liters of upward force required, which is the displacement that we need to answer that question. So, nice and simple. If you're watching this video and you maybe have some examples of your own that you would like some guidance of, then by all means send a message and I'll see if I can help you work those out and provide you with some guidance. Um, the purpose of this, like I said at the top of the show, the show, this mini video, um, was to try and simplify this, okay? So I've tried to simplify it by telling you OWD, then sing the riddle. That way we forget the need for any complex mathematical equations, okay? And we can still work the answer out nice and simply. All right, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you get something out of this. Um, best of luck with your future studies.